All right, so for those of you just joining us, I'm gonna give everybody about 45 more seconds, but if you haven't got a pen or paper or a pencil or crayon or some other utensil in which to sketch along, please go grab that now. Am I the only uncool person without a webcam? Because that makes me feel left out. <laughs> yes. Yeah, or mm -hmm. if you're, if you have it, uh, a sketch note uh, idea book, if you have one handy, which I love mine. Please note Amy has two webcams. Yeah, I was going to be like, Amy, I didn't know you had a twin sister. <laughs> Maybe I do. All right, so um, step one, everybody, we do have a couple different Zoom options here. So I think probably the easiest thing for you to do, first of all, make sure you're on mute if you're not already. But then in the top right, there's a gallery view versus speaker view. Um, I feel like you're probably going to have a much more enjoyable experience if you put this to speaker view. Otherwise, you're going to get this one inch by one inch presentation. So thank you everyone for coming. Um, we have a couple of different people who are going to give you some quick, uh, quick updates today. So I guess, first of all, I'm Ash from Brew City UX. I'm one of the organizers. Um, we've got Kate on as well. She's the host of this Zoom event. And so the two of us, as well as our other Brew City UX organizers have partnered with MSUE on our lecture series here, which Amy will tell you more about. Um, but aside from the MSUE lecture series, we do have a, a number of different events that we're going to be doing in 2021. Um, we're actually working on organizing those now. So stay tuned after the holiday break, you'll start to see a lot more from us. Uh, Amy, the floor is yours. Fantastic. Welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for coming and attending uh, the second of our lecture series in partnership with Bruce City UX. I want to thank uh, Bruce City UX and uh, specifically Ash for really uh, helping support and um, helping pull this together as well. So thank you so much, Ash, for that. And um, we have a January presentation that will be following uh, Mike's presentation. And also thank you so much, Mike, for being here today. I'm very excited for this interactive. Um, I've been an uh, interactive presentation. I've been in your presentations before and every single time that I uh, participate, I learn something new and my sketch, uh, my sketching toolbox always just gets deeper and deeper. So thank you so much, I'm excited for today. Um, in January, we will also have a lecture series um, and it will be uh, focusing on information architecture. Specifically, um, it's going to be about communicating complexity with models and Joe Elmendorf from the Understanding Group will be here to talk about how do models help with information architecture? How can models help you in everyday life? And he's been doing a lot of work in this space as well. We'll be posting more information around the lecture as well as about Joe. Joe is also a professor at UWM um, and he teaches information architecture there as well. Um, so look for those details. It will be January 19th at six o'clock and I look forward to seeing you all there as well. Um, and also, I also have to put in a quick pitch for uh, MSOE UX department. We are a new department, a uh, new program at MSOE, or newer, I should say. We're about three years old. For those of you that don't know about us, here we are. We are very, very excited to uh, have our first students graduating. We, um, this, this quarter, we have a couple of other, uh, a couple of students that have graduated. Um, uh, as well last year, um, but we're very, very new and we're very excited. Check us out. Um, one of the things I do wanna offer you all is our amazing students are available for internships year round. We do internships in the summer. We do um, internships in the winter. We do internships in the spring. So if you need a UX intern that is highly qualified in order to help your organization with all of your user experience needs, please come talk to myself, Amy LaPointe, or uh, Dr. Nadia Shalomova, who is also on this call. We would love to talk to you about it. In addition to that, we are in the process of looking for a new member to join our faculty. And so if you're interested, there's information out there as well. And I would encourage you to take a look. And if you have any questions, also feel free to reach out to myself or Dr. Shalomova. 
And with that being said, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and pass it off to the amazing Mike Rohde to take us through sketching our uh, secret design tool for thinking. All right, Mike, I think I'm stopping now. There we go. Okay, cool. All right. I'm gonna do a little sharing here. So you're gonna see two of me in a second. I think you should be seeing two of me. Uh, one, a small one, and then the, the one I'm sharing is my speaker view, and I'll be using that to walk you through. We'll be doing sketching. I'll be sketching on my desk here in a minute. Uh, what I first thought I'd do is just take a few minutes uh, for those who don't know who I, who I am, uh, just to give you a little in overview. Um, so um, I'm Mike Rohde, um, and this is uh, sketching the visual thinking power. So superpower, I guess you could say. Um, where I work is I work at Johnson Control, so I'm a principal designer there um, and a visualizer. So I do lots of visualization of things. And, and the, what we do at Johnson Controls now um, is uh, we focus on smart buildings. Uh, a lot of what we work on includes uh, Internet of Things, IoT integrations into machinery uh, and that connectivity. Um, Johnson Controls is well known for HVAC in the past and still really strong in uh, heating, ventilation, air conditioning, but also uh, with a recent merger a few years ago, also does um, security. So, you know, badging and so forth, um, as well as fire prevention and suppression. So that would be sprinklers and, uh, you know, sensors to make sure there's no fire happening. Um, so that's what I do. And we have really interesting problems that we deal with every day, uh, often very complex, um, work with lots of engineers. So that provides its own challenge and, but engineers really fun to work with. Um, and so that's what I do professionally. So I'm also the author of the Sketchnote Handbook and the Sketchnote Workbook. And I have actually a sample. So this is the Russian version of my book, the Sketchnote Handbook. Um, what's interesting about this book is it's, it's eight years old this week. And uh, inside it, it, it's actually designed to be like a Sketchnote. So if you look through the book, it's actually got lots of sketches. It's kind of bright right now. In fact, maybe what I'll do is I will switch my view. Now you can see a little bit better. So there's the Russian, the cover. Um, so really the idea here was to explain the idea of sketch notes in a clear way by using sketch notes. And it's, um, it's a fun book. It's, uh, as I said, it just turned eight years old um, and it's uh, translated in seven languages now, which is really fun for me to share with other people. So I'm also the author or the uh, illustrator for a couple of books. Uh, this one called Remote and this one called Rework, which maybe you've heard of one of these, uh, both best-selling books. Uh, these are by the guys in Chicago named um, David, David uh, Heidemar Hansen and Jason Fried. And uh, the first one that they did was Rework and it talked about the, all the things they learned in 10 years of business. They sort of encapsulated it and I was really fortunate to do illustration work for the book. So um, really fun to work with the guys and do this kind of really bold illustration to communicate the ideas of each chapter. So that's kind of the work that I did on that and that's that's done really well. And then I was able to be part of the follow-up book, which is remote, which is actually pretty uh, relevant right now with uh, so much going on uh, where we have to be remote, right? So there's all these concepts around how to do remote, what's the right mindset. And again, I did the illustrations uh, here. So that's another project that I worked on. Also worked on uh, what Amy showed you, the Sketchnote Idea Book. And the story behind this is that I just felt like there were no sketchbooks that did exactly what I wanted them to do. So I set out to uh, make my own. I found a, a guy in New York, um, Mike Sciano, who I partnered with. We did a Kickstarter, it was uh, successful and we successfully produced um, a bunch of these uh, Sketchnote idea books. You can buy them at sketchnoteideabook.com still. We ordered extra. And what, what they are is um, just this book with a really nice rubbery cover. Inside we've got guides for how to do sketch noting, some references for different layouts you can use, uh, and then just really good quality blank paper inside so you can do sketch noting with those. And I'll be using this for my sketching today so you can see it in action. So um, 
I'm also a speaker and a teacher. Uh, I'm going to be doing a workshop uh, this weekend on lettering if you're interested in that. So um, reach out to me if you are, and we can get you connected up with that. Uh, and then finally, I've, I'm the founder of Sketchnote Army. So as a sketchnoter and doing it for many years, I noticed a lot of people did sketchnoting, but there was no central place to find it at the time. So in 2009, I uh, re registered sketchnotearmy.com and started to share other people's work um, on the site. And uh, back in 2016, I added something called the Sketchnote Army podcast, where I actually, instead of just showing the work on the site, we actually did uh, interviews. So I interviewed people from all over the world and all different uh, areas of visual thinking and try to understand what makes them tick. So it's really fun for me to um, talk with those people and share it with everybody else. So we're in the eighth season now, it's crazy. It's been four years and eight seasons and that's sort of where we're at right now. And so with that, um, let's uh, move into sketching the visual thinking power tool. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to switch back Mike, over. Can I, yeah, go ahead. Can I jump in real quick? Sure. If those of you that didn't see, you also have an opportunity to win one of Mike's sketch right. note handbooks. We have two copies that we'll be giving away at the end of his presentation. Yeah. So uh, what I wanted to do is sort of go through some samples of work so you can see, this is some of the sketch work that I've done in the past for different things. Just wanted to give you a, a feeling for, for some of this and some of the stuff we're gonna do, though this is more detailed. This was, uh, I used to do lots of logo design work. And so you can see, I would sort of sketch these crazy ideas to try and solve problems with my customers. Um, you can see that, uh, remember the rework that I showed you, these are all the sketches that I did, the thumbnail sketches to come up with different ideas. So you can see what those look like in a really early stage. This is going to be a lot more like what we're going to be doing today um, in the exercise. So this is a sample of how I typically work. I'm going to show you a few others as well. So here is an example of sketch notes for a website. So um, one of the things that I kind of believe in is that you, you really should be doing sketching as long as possible. And the reason that I think you should do sketching as long as possible is that when once you step into software, Sketch, XD, Photoshop, doesn't even matter, Word, a Word document, um, once you start working with software, you are now accepting the limits of the software. And I think there's something about being able to sketch and explore ideas um, that frees you up and lets you explore in a different way than you would if you jumped to software. Um, so these are some sketches of uh, a website I did uh, years ago for Serigraph, a company in the area. And what, what you can see here is I've got a variety of different options that I was exploring at the time. And I would call these thumbnail sketches. They're very small. You can see there's not much detail. If I come in a little bit closer, you'll see that there really is no text on the sketch. It's just lines, right? But it is representational enough for what I needed to do. And this is kind of the sketching we're gonna to do tonight because we have limited time. And also I understand that um, many of you may feel like you're uh, not great artists and that might be a, a stumbling block for you. So we're gonna we're gonna teach you how to do some basic drawing. So that won't be an issue for you anymore. So you can see that I've done three different ideas. You can see I was also starting to explore the, the site map and how the structure of the site would look um, and started playing with these different ideas. And you can see I wrote notes as well so that I could remember what I was thinking about at the time. So this is a really useful technique for exploring ideas. Here's a little bit simpler sketch I'll show you. I was working with a, a company who was doing um, a, a photographic tool that would take pictures of a human body as it moved and was able to track it. And so we were working on this application. And so what I did is I sat down with the customer and was trying to figure out like how the flow of the information would work. So I actually sat down with a pencil with this person next to me and I drew out what I thought it was. And the, this person that said, yeah, that's, this is this and that's that. And so we were able to map this out. I find this really helpful. This is another useful benefit of sketching. And that is to communicate ideas with someone else. I think a lot of times you can get in a situation where when you talk about an idea, you have this illusion that you agree on things when in actuality you have different ideas in your heads. 
So you have a different idea and the other person or the other people have different ideas than you. And by doing things like this, where you lay it, where you sketch it out, whether it's on a piece of paper or on a whiteboard, you can sort of come to an agreement about what it is that you're trying to achieve. I did a lot of this when I worked at Northwestern Mutual uh, with teams on whiteboards, developers, product owners, um, and different variety of people who would come in and we would work on software together. And drawing it out like this was really beneficial for the team because everyone saw this uh, unfolding. They could see what we talked about visually. We had photographs after the fact that were a reference that could be used by the developers. Um, so this is a really useful, powerful tool for explanation as well as thinking through ideas. I'm gonna show you, um, this is a piece of software. I did a pencil sketch uh, wireframe. This is a much more detailed sketch. We're not gonna do this level of detail tonight, but you can sort of see how the level of detail it can get to. Um, this is a tool called Pearnote. Um, and the idea behind this tool in a, in a nutshell is it's a note-taking tool, but what's interesting is it binds in uh, recording of audio. So you can type notes while you're recording audio. You can also have video from your camera being recorded and you can have slides that you can load in like a PDF and flip through the slides. And all these things get synchronized into the file that's saved. So when you play back your notes, you can see yourself typing, you can hear the audio, you can see the video, and can watch the slides moving as uh, you work through this presentation. And so you can see I'm exploring uh, how the playback and record controls work. What does the scrubber look like? Uh, started playing around with some of the icons, like where is the search gonna be? Uh, even some of the explorations about sound waves and then some of the details. And you can see that it's, you know, pretty rough and uh, really was just a, a step along the way. I think the other thing that's useful about sketches is when you feel like they're not the final uh, endpoint, you feel a lot more comfortable just making them a step along the way or a means to an end. So they don't have to be beautiful if the paper gets crump crumpled, doesn't matter, because eventually this is going to be you know, in my case, designed, in your case, maybe you're sketching out your, your uh, garden plot, right? And you wanna uh, build it, right? Eventually you're gonna get cin uh, cinder blocks and, and soil and flowers and such, and you'll actually build it. And then the sketch you did is just a means to the end. So I think that's another thing to remember about sketches is they're not really meant to be framed in a, uh, in a gallery, they're functional uh, tools. The last thing I'm going to show you is uh, these are thumbnail sketches I did for my second book, the Sketchnote Workbook. And uh, I'll explain why, what the value to these was. You can see that I actually built a frame uh, out that I printed on blank printer paper. Uh, and then I actually sketched in pencil every single page in the book to lay out the information. So I'd already written the manuscript and now was laying out what will the manuscript look like when it's actually laid out on the page. Now something to note, um, even though I had the manuscript, none of the illustration was completed. So this was not only uh, an indication of pages to know how many pages would, would be in the book to make sure it fit, but it also gave me a guide as to what things do I need to illustrate so I could actually make a list and batch it out. So something you'll notice is I started with these large um, frames, right? There was sketching pages. And the reason I did this in the first chapter is it was pretty well defined. And I wanted to go a little bit more in detail, but you'll notice when I got to chapter two, suddenly I went to this smaller size, really almost a thumbnail sketch. You can see the page numbers are here. So one of the critical things I had to figure out was I had a set number of pages that I had to hit at the end. So by numbering the pages and knowing how the manuscript would lay out, it helped me to define, to make sure that I was going to make it uh, in the book. Either I would be short and know that I could spread out a, a couple of pages in a certain chapter or I was too long and I would have to trim back somewhere. So you can see as I go through um, all these sketches and that the detail is not really that detailed. I'm, here you can see I'm inferring that there's some kind of an icon and some text, but there is no text here. You can see I'm showing that I want a sample here. I hadn't quite decided what that sample would be. And the cool thing about this was it allowed me, like I said, to go through and like identify, oh, I need an uh, illustration for this and this and this and this. And I could just go through and almost have a visual um, to-do list that I could look at. And so this went all the way through, all the way to the end of the book until I had every single page laid out. So it was a lot of work, but the benefit was by having this all laid out ahead of time, when it came time to do production 
um, I had everything worked out and laid out and I could just actually do the work. So there was some real benefit to having this kind of a sketch to work from. So again, those are some of the benefits of having sketches and what they can do for you. All right. So now I'm going to switch over to my book and talk a little bit about what we're going to do tonight. So I think the first thing we're going to, we need to do is to talk about the five basic shapes, the five basic elements of drawing. Uh, this is something that I discovered when I did the sketch note handbook. And the reason I uh, realized I had to solve this problem was I didn't think I would send, sell many books if people couldn't actually draw. So I had to solve this problem. And there was some thinking at the time around using simple shapes to do drawing. And I uh, created a version of that that was very simple. We're gonna, I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do for our sketch exercise together. And then we're gonna sketch together for about 45 minutes. Um, so we'll give you plenty of time to explore and ask questions. I'm gonna be sketching in my book during that whole time. So you can watch me uh, as you're sketching and I'll be talking and maybe we can even do some Q and A while we're doing that. Uh, then the last thing we're gonna do before Q and A is showing samples. So we're gonna have samples of your work. I think we're gonna ask three people maybe, depending on time to show the sketches you've done and maybe talk about them a little bit. And then finally, we'll have time at the end for Q&A. And then after Q&A, we're gonna do our giveaway. So that is what we're going to do. So the first thing that I wanna do is talk about sketching with the five basic shapes, the five basic elements. So as I mentioned, I realized um, if I couldn't convince people that they could draw, I would have an issue selling books, right? So let's talk about the five basic elements of drawing. And these are really important for sketching as well. All right, so the five basic elements that I decided on were these, a square, a circle, a triangle, a line, and a dot. I'll come in there and, and indicate these. Now a square is also a rectangle, you know, it can be stretched out. A circle could be an oval. There's all different kinds of triangles. Lines can be straight or wiggly, right? Or a variety of things, and then dots. Well, dots are dots. So uh, the, what the interesting thing is, is if you start thinking about drawing using these shapes, um, they're easy to remember because there's only five, right? So it's not hard to remember each one of these. But what's interesting is you can almost treat them like Lego pieces. My kids are really into Legos. So I see Legos, I step on them all the time. So the first thing I'm gonna show you, and I do a variety of these just to show the concept. So first, if you wanna get your pen and paper, if you haven't already, follow along with me and draw the five elements and then write the word house. Uh, and what we're gonna do is, um, I think maybe I'll zoom in a little bit more. Let's get down there and zoom in. So on the house, what I realized was you could get away with a really simple house by simply using two of these elements, a triangle on top of a square, right? And with the word house underneath it, they work together and they tell the story of what that thing is. In fact, if you cover up house, it's probably a good chance you're going to guess that's a house just because it's a really common symbol for us. But what's interesting is uh, with this concept is you can do things like adding a rectangle and now you have a door. You can add a line and now you've got a window on the door. Got our dots, now we've got a doorknob. Another square up in the attic. A rectangle for the smokestack. And then finally, either the smokestack or the chimney, you have a wiggly line. So we've used all of the elements except for the circle really on just this one symbol. So let's do something else. I'm gonna draw something and then label it after. So I'll start with a rectangle and right in the middle, draw a line. And what this is, is a book. So I could stop right here. And as long as I had the word book here, I have a strong uh, possibility of you knowing what it is. Even if I cover that up, you might even guess that it's a book. But there's some things we can do just like with the house 
to give it more detail. So let's put a line under there. We'll connect the corners in the middle. And now you've sort of suggested to your mind or to someone's mind that it's got depth. Even though it's two dimensions, that little thing you just did, um, your pattern recognition picks it up as meaning, hey, there's pages, it's got thickness. The other thing you can do is you can put lines here to represent text on the page. You can even use a square over here and some more lines to suggest a picture. Now let's say, what if we do, we'll get our circle. Maybe it's a, a picture of the sun, right? So now you've got a book with some text and a picture. So all these little details are really simple, but yet they communicate the idea of the book really clearly. All right, so um, you can start to see how you can put these things together as um, a collection of things, right? And makes it makes a shape, and especially if you've got the word to go along with it, you know, you can really um, make these work together. So now let's do a world or earth. So right here, what, what I want you to do is draw a circle. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then what we can do is just suggest some continents. Maybe there's Florida, South America, Africa, Europe, England, Ireland. So you can see all we've done is a few little scribbles here, just a few lines and then a circle. But yet we have the sense that this is a world or an earth. Now, the last one I'm going to show you in this um, line is um, a lot of people worry about uh, three-dimensional objects, that if you're going to draw three-dimensional objects, that that can be really challenging. And it is, especially if you're not experienced and you feel concerned, like if you haven't drawn since you were in 13 years old or something, um, it, this could be really challenging for you. However, what I always say to people is why not draw two-dimensionally until you have to draw three-dimensionally. Pretty much everything can be drawn flat from a side view. So what I'm drawing here is a coffee cup. And all it is is a rectangle on top of a rectangle. And now I'm going to add two curves. And now I've got a handle. I can even use my lines. And now I've got vapor to suggest it's hot coffee. So again, if you focus on the view being two-dimensional as long as possible, you don't have to worry about doing three-dimensional like circles and making it look weird. Uh, there's no reason why you can't just simplify and focus on making everything two-dimensional. And so the big idea that I talk about when I do this is ideas, not art. If you see anything about me, you're probably going to see this phrase. And what that means is a lot of people have baggage around art like we talked about. If you stop drawing when you're 12, 13 years old, maybe in grade school, right? Maybe you're very accomplished at something, but drawing is this weak point, right? It's almost as scary, if maybe not, maybe even more scary than public speaking because you just don't feel comfortable doing it. And if you're successful in one area and you feel like your drawing ability is that of a second grader or a fifth grader or something, um, that sort of you know can be uh, an embarrassing feeling, right? So the focus of ideas, not art, is we're focusing on ideas. We're not doing art today. This is not going to hang in a gallery. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, good enough is good enough, right? We're focusing on ideas. And that, for many people, just shifting the focus from art back to ideas is huge. It sort of takes away all the pressure. It makes it more fun because you're being judged on a different criteria. You're not being judged on how good your drawing is. You're being judged on, does the idea get communicated in what I'm drawing? So I think that's a really important thing um, to be aware of and to think about. So the next thing I'm gonna do is, we have a specific task we're gonna be doing tonight. We're gonna be drawing some interfaces since I think there's lots of designers here, but anyone can do this. It's a good exercise no matter who you are. So what I'm going to do is take those same five elements and start showing you some ways that they can be applied tonight. So we're going to be drawing and sketching an application on a phone. So you can do a rectangle and now you've got a phone screen. You can do a line and now you've got the top of the app. You can have another line and you can do 
maybe a circle in the middle, a triangle and a square. If you want to suggest icons, they don't even have to be the real thing. Maybe you've got a circle here for the little logo and a square inside for content. Maybe some lines here for some text. So you can see that it doesn't take very much in those five basic elements to build a really rough thumbnail sketch of a phone screen. This can come in handy too for if you, um, if you have a website, let's say, and you want to redesign the website, same idea. You can just extend this out, use the same circle for the logo. Maybe on the website, you've got a login, right? So now you just have another line here. Let's say you've got a little more real estate. So let's widen out that picture a little bit. We'll put our text below. Maybe on this, we have a call to action and there's a button. So I draw another rectangle and just put a line in there. That's enough to communicate a button. And then on the right, let's do some lines. As close, you know, they, they make them as straight as you can. It doesn't matter. Um, there's some text over on the right. Maybe there's a picture here. Right, so here's some really basic elements you can do to draw an interface. Now there's a few other things. Let's go in more detail. Move this down a little bit. So if you have a little more room, like if you have space and you wanted to go in more detail, well, you could, you could do a button here and do the word save in there. But as you see, this could also represent the same thing, right? Maybe you even do this as like, what is that button? Let's save or buy or whatever it is, right? Um, you can also use circles for, you know, like radio buttons. A triangle can be useful inside of a rectangle. So let's, let's take this further. Let's do the same thing here and let's do select. I think I can make this work. And now you've got a triangle. Now you've got a drop down, right? And you can even extend that rectangle down. Choice one. Choice two, choice three, All right? So you can start to see how these elements can help you. And you really, we're really not doing anything but lines and squares, really. I'm sort of pushing it to do the triangles and the circles. You almost don't even need them to do this kind of uh, sketchy concept work. So the other thing is uh, you see they've got the arrows going to sort of maybe do like a zoom in. I could do something like this to suggest that's a zoom in. You could also do things like this with an arrow and then you can give annotation. So this is, uh, maybe that's the home button. All right. And so the kind of work that we're gonna be doing is really simple stuff like this. We're gonna be doing annotations and arrows and that's uh, what our task is gonna to be tonight. So with that, let me flip over here, we'll switch pages. And I'll talk a little bit about our sketch exercise because I think it's right about the right time to start that. So our sketch exercise is going to be pretty simple. We're going to redesign Instagram's main screen. Probably most of you have used Instagram or have seen it. Uh, we're going to use concept sketches to do this. So what I want to challenge you to do is in the 40 or 45 minutes we have to work, Go for quantity, play around, do goofy, silly stuff. Like this is your opportunity to play and have fun. Don't get too hung up on making it perfect. Because remember, you know, it's ideas, is not art, right? We're gonna have 45 minutes to work. And again, at the end, I think we'll do like three volunteers to share the sketching that, that you've done. And now here's our last detail. So this, these are the constraints. So I'm putting some boundaries on you. I think it's really helpful as designers to remember that constraints are your friend. You often uh, are maybe challenged and feel like constraints are your enemy, but I think they're your friend. I think uh, constraints box you in and make you can often make you very creative. And so I'm going to put constraints on this exercise. So um, there are 16 functions that I counted in the Instagram UI. I hope, hopefully I'm right. Um, and I'll show that to you in a second. Um, you can use all 16 of them. If you don't want to change in your sketches, 
those 16 uh, elements, you can leave them all in there. But there's an option. You can remove up to three of them. So there's three you don't like, like say you don't like the shop icon, you can kill it. You can do up to three. So you got to have, there have to be at least 13 icons on your screen. The other thing you could do is replace three with new ideas. So if there's three that, if, that you think are just dumb, you can replace them with new ideas that you have as you start exploring uh, and playing with ideas. And again, uh, I want sketches with notes and uh, arrows. So kind of like this. So I want a sketch. I want arrows and notes about what that thing is. And the reason that's important is when you do these kind of sketches, it's going to be valuable for you if you come back a month later to decode what you sketched and what your ideas were. If you don't do that, you're going to miss some of the detail uh, that when it was fresh. It's also valuable if, you, if you're a designer and you're going to work with a developer to hand this off to them or take a photo and send it to them. To have this in the, the detail in there to explain what you're thinking is going to be helpful. And it, it doesn't have to be fancy. It can just be a single word or maybe two words so that you can remember what it was that you were thinking. So those are our constraints today. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over and show you. I made a printout of an Instagram homepage. So let's come back up again. And Is this an elaborate ploy to get us all to follow you on Instagram? Uh, no, actually, I didn't think of it that way. But you certainly can. Um, <laughs> so let's count the different things. So um, let's see what I've got here. So I don't count the logo as, I, I count these as functions. They have to do something. Instagram logo is just branding. I guess you could click on them if it does anything. So here, uh, I've just got the redesigned Instagram. This is what sparked it in my, my thinking. So they just redesigned the Instagram interface, at least for me. And it's sort of, I had, I've been getting used to it. So this is the create something new uh, post. This is your um, um, comments and likes are in this. So when you click on this, you go to your comments and likes. This is your messenger. So you can message with other people through this icon. I count this whole thing as one function and that are, uh, I think they call it stories in Instagram. It seems like everybody's got stories, right? So this, I'm gonna call this as a function. So there's four. Uh, the fifth, uh, and I'm separating these is my little icon does one thing, it'll take you to your story. But if I click on my name, it'll actually take you to my account. So these are actually two separate functions. So now we're at five, six. This uh, allows you to block or do other stuff. So there's seven. And then if we come down here, we've got the like button, of course. That's eight. Comment nine, send 10. You can bookmark, there's 11. And then down here, we've got home 12, search 13, videos 14, shop 15, and then your uh, profile 16, which I guess is technically the same. These are the same function, but they're two separate and in independent things. So these are the, the elements that we have on the screens that we're gonna be working with today. So again, coming back to our, look at that, fits perfectly, our constraints. So you can use all of these 16 functions. If you decide, you know, shopping is dumb. You don't have to use that. You can pick any three of these that you wanna get rid of if you like to explore. And then, you know, of course you need to think about why are you removing it? What's the rationale for removing it so that you have some thinking behind it? Or you can replace if you, think there's three things that you have better ideas for something for another function. And you want like say messaging is you don't think is that important. You want to replace it with something else. You can do that. Um, so those are your options. So with that, um, if you got a pen and some paper, I'm going to use this other page next to me, fold this over so I can get it close. And I'm going to do some sketching. So if you want to follow along and watch and uh, I'll sort of talk about what I'm thinking as I'm doing it. And then you can see sort of how I think about sketching. I have a quick question, if you yeah, don't mind. Please. Go ahead. So yes, um, does iPad sketching, like, you know, sketching an iPad counts as a sure. sketching? Yeah, okay. I think so. You don't have to use paper and pen. You can use an iPad if that's more comfortable for you, sure. Okay, thank you. I use it all the time. 
Any other questions before I start going? This is a good time to ask them. And if you if something pops in your head while we're sketching, just ask. This is pretty laid back. So the the functions are home, make a post, comments and likes together, messenger, stories, your profile account, comments, bookmark, search, shop, share, and the individual post. You kind of don't realize how many people are standing in the screen, do you? I'm missing that four. That's why. So I count this as one, two, three. I count all stories as four. It's more like a feature. I count my head here as five. My name is six because they do different things. This takes me to stories. This takes me to my account. I count the like as seven. The commenting is eight. The send is nine. The bookmark is 10. I forget the tag as well. Yeah. 11, 12, 13, 14. What was I doing? What did I have? Oh, did I have? No, I didn't have. Because it's rolling it's the tagging off. feature as well. And uh, in the photo, it's a little uh, okay, black here. circle in the right bottom here. left. Okay. Yeah. So that's 16. That's the one I missed. Does that make sense? No, I don't. I still don't have them all. I have like post and icon story. Those are the only two I added. Yeah. Well, you know what? Uh, it's what about two. What about those like little three dots on the upper right corner of the picture? Oh, here, that... yeah, maybe this is. So maybe we have Jeez. seven. So I would say, even though I said there were sixteen, I guess I miscounted. Um, I think the, the more important part is that you can remove up to three or you can swap three. Let's focus more on that. Or you can leave them like leave however many you want alone. Just gives you some latitude to play, but not too much. Like I don't want to make, I don't want to offer it up where you could like take everything away and have just a picture, right? We have to work within constraints, which, you know, aren't always great. So any other questions before we begin? So I'll take that quietness as a no. And I'm going to go ahead and start to sketch here. And I'll talk while I'm doing it. If something comes up or an idea comes up, let's, uh, if it's okay with uh, Amy and Ashley, we can just chat through it. All right. So, Mike, we'll watch the comments as well. Okay, sounds good. Sounds, sounds perfect. So um, something I could tell you is um, I'm going to draw a rectangle and a lot of times it can be really hard to get a straight line. So one thing I've noticed is if I sort of hold the pen in my hand and sort of hold it steady and instead of trying to move the pen, I move my whole hand, it actually can be better for trying to get a more straight line. See that? So what I've done is I put my hand steady and I drag my whole hand down. And I think if you know, if it's imperfect, that's okay. So that's roughly right. Maybe it's a little bit short, but that's okay. So the first thing I think I would do is, um, you know, I do my Instagram logo, I would just do a scribble there. Something I thought about was, I feel like um, content feels like it's more important than what they're giving indication for. So I'm going to, I'm going to mess with these. I think, I think it would probably be a hard sell at this point to get rid of the stories. Although maybe in one of these sketches, we could move them. If you notice something too, that they always have one story that's sliced off. I think this is very intentional um, because it sort of indicates there's more, right? If you, if you didn't show that, you would think there might only be four, but having something popping up like that is sort of a, that's a little sneaky indicator. All right, so I think when I look at this, I'm just gonna draw a line for my photo. I'm not gonna even, let me draw it out there. So we'll just assume the picture's there. I won't even draw that.
I wonder if it would be interesting if you actually put the icon right inside the picture. That would be problematic. I guess one of the challenges here is if you have a really complex picture, you'd have to have like some kind of a shape around this and it would it would cover up the photo. So I'm sure that they thought about this. Right? But let's kind of explore. It's one of the things that you can do when you deconstruct an interface like this is sort of realize like, oh, wow, there is a reason why this is above the image, right? If I put it inside, now I have to put a shape or a pill or something. What if it's really long? Now I've got to account for this thing being pretty big and covering us, you know, 10% of my picture. Whereas like uh, this little icon here, it works pretty well. It looks like it's shaded, so it always shows through the image. I know that if you do multiple pictures, I think there's like a, there's three little dots down here to suggest there's more. And then there's like a one of three indicator, which are not part of this one, but I'm, I'm just thinking like those are clear spaces that they're leaving. So I would say, what if you put the controls all right in the middle? just for the fun of it and the bookmark. Now you've got clear space on either side. Makes me wonder what could I do with that if I had clear space here? Maybe this could actually come down here, right? You could take this and move it down there. And then think about what could this side be? I guess you don't want to have just the head here because now you're going to run into the icons with your name if it's long. So that's a problem. Just going to use some text here to indicate the text, some lines I mean. I kind of think, I sort of prefer when Instagram was a little bit more focused on creating content. So I would maybe make this put this in the middle and emphasize it. So you can see I'm doing something where I'm thinking about centering, playing around with this idea of centering. It does seem important that home remains. So let's keep the home icon. I kind of question the, I guess the video is a pretty strong one too. Maybe I would keep the search here. Put my video on this side, and maybe my little head. It's the interesting thing is these are the same thing, so maybe I could maybe I could eliminate that or simplify that. I don't know. So you can see that's a first idea, so I would say. Uh, new image, center, and larger. Maybe I'll put a note in here that remove the shop icon. Took away one. I really haven't messed around with these. So the stories are still there. Now I have to come up here. So I've gotten rid of the head here. So maybe actually I'll leave the messaging here and the status. I know the status used to be down here. So this gives me a little more clear space there. So maybe I'll put a note that um, Move the new below. I'm going to kind of document what I was talking about before. Issues with a photo and name on 
on top of photos. So if this is, you know, a very busy corner, that could really mess up the text. So there's one sketch. So now with that fresh in my mind, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to draw another square over here. Give me a little bit of space to write notes. All right. So I think in this case, I wonder I'm going to bring back my picture and my name and location. I'm going to leave these three dots here where they are. And my photo will be here. So this avoids the problem of the icon being on top of a photo. You'll notice that I'm I've gotten rid of the stories for now. So I wonder, going back to this, let's see. Maybe let's go back to the more original. So you've got the like, the comment. I wonder about this send. Could I put send under here on the three dots? Or bookmark. Maybe what I could do is actually do, I'm not playing with it, send and bookmark together. I've got a clear space in the middle. I could leave that alone or I could play with it. I got my text. So what happens if I do stories down below? sort of a non-standard location. And even LinkedIn has stories, which seems kind of silly to me, but. So here's the challenge I can see already. See how busy this could potentially be. Even if I gave it a little space, let's just say I don't mess with it. I just match what I had before. So now I'm getting this crashing into it. Not only is it non-standard, but I'm running into this. Now, sometimes what I'll do is if I'm in this mode and I want to explore just a section, I'll just draw that part. So let's say, what if we tried something different? What if the stories were in a band by themselves? get my black marker. I think Instagram now does have a dark mode that after a certain time of night, it'll switch off like this, turn dark. What if it was dark mode all the time? And then the rest of the user interface matched it at a certain time of night. Maybe it's dark gray, it doesn't have to be black. But for the purpose of this, and it would, I would assume too that the, the name would be under there, right? So let's zoom, let's zoom this out and sort of show what that would look like. Right. So it would be some kind of a thing like that. So it would still re retain the look. But now I can come back in. Now I've got a separator. Let's do home. What if I simplify again? Maybe it's search. Video. Maybe because this is already here. What if I put the little dot below there? Now I can just make it shop right there. And I'll do a little indication that this has gone here. Put a little note for indicator. I'm 
There's my three dots. So now I've lost my emphasis, uh, like this one, on the new image. So we could come back. What if the new was dark? These icons were darker. Mike. Yeah. I'm going to throw us strange scenario at you you did at me let's do it what if you made it uh horizontal or or oh. landscape okay good challenge versus the standard portrait yeah because i think right now um that is a limitation if you flip instagram uh it will just stay <laughs> it will stay portrait it will mm -hmm. not right i know that um, my space is trying to be horizontal. Really? Even though you scroll down, you go right. So I use my trick pin where I hold the pen pretty tightly and I move my whole hand so that the pen actually stays pretty stable. Let's do it to about here. I have a little bit of room on either side so I can Sketch. I'm going to show you another little thing that I found useful. So I've got another pen here that's actually teal. I'm going to do my annotations in teal. So what I, the reason I mentioned this is I found um, when I worked at Northwestern Mutual and I did whiteboard work, having two colors is really helpful so that I could draw in one color, usually black, and then I would put my notes in a bright color like teal or red or something like that. All right, so what are our limitations here vertically? We would have a challenge right now. You're used to you know the flick scroll, right? So I would assume that you're going to need branding. I'm not going to let you get away without that. It could be interesting. The photos were still square. What if they? Went horizontally. Now here's another interesting thought. If our stories went vertically. Notice I'm showing that there's one down there. And these could actually, maybe there would need to be more space up front. So you see you've got the photos are going sort of this direction, and then the stories are going this direction. So if that being the case, I guess you could still have identifiers for people. This would float under. Maybe what you would sacrifice is like the text underneath. I mean, I guess you could show it there. But what if you didn't show the text? What if it was just an image? Maybe when you click on it, it does something. So let's say it's got still the same controls. I think you'd still want to like it. You'd still want to comment on it. In this case, if I do it about here, what if there's a space right here to do a new maybe you could have a control to do either a story, a video, or a post. Kind of in the middle of the thing. A little bit weird, but I 
we'll just maintain these icons here. So the thing you would lose is the text below. You'd also lose the shop and other things, right? It does start to get a little busy. Where is home at? Do we put home up here? Maybe search next to it. I've got video and I've got a video in that. Post. This sort of does break the stories concept, right? Because if you did stories, you would have to flip it vertically. Interesting. Let's put my annotations on here. Number of these, let's make it four. I have to think about what am I gonna do with this dead space down here. What can I do with that dead space? I did kill off the, the chat. Get the bookmarking. Where the shop is here. You end up with Kind of a weird dead space when I did this way. It is interesting how much uh, it is dependent on the vertical because of the stories now. Like old Instagram, you could have maybe done something like this, but new Instagram, it would be tough because there's so much of emphasis on vertical video. Somebody gonna say something? I was going to, again, I was going to give you an, another crazy scenario, uh, maybe, uh, the last weird scenario, and we could maybe uh, see what everybody else has. Yeah, yeah that'd be great. You down for another challenge, Mike? Do it. I'm always ready for a challenge. All right. What if the whole screen was the image and everything else was an overlay? All the functions were overlays. So go back to a more of a vertical. Whichever vertical or horizontal. It is interesting how the vertical has sort of become pretty standard. The way you hold the phone, the way you work with the phone, the way videos, I know there was lots of pressure in originally shooting videos to turn it horizontally. And I guess if you're shooting for a big screen, you do, but it's like now the a lot of this is built native for the device. It's really interesting. All right, so we've got a whole image and everything's gotta be an overlay. Hmm. I'm really interested in how you would draw that is, yeah. is why I asked because I started playing around with it myself. I'm like, how do I even wire this or sketch this out? Well, one of the and challenges also, you would face is that if you had the image um, as a complete image mm -hmm. uh, and you had overlays, that if you did, if you did white icons here, uh, it wouldn't work on every image. And if you did black icons, it wouldn't work on every image. You, but what could be interesting is if, what if, what if the icons, uh, because of an algorithm, are smart enough to sense the pixels underneath them and they and they toggle. Yes. Right. So let's just, just for the fun of it, let's overlap exactly. I'm not going to do any subtraction at all. Right. Now that could get weird for reading stuff like in the text here, right? Because if every character was different based on the image. So maybe in the text area, maybe there is like a light. Maybe I would call this like a, where's my pen at? What if this is like 15% white? So if you look on my, look on my screen over here, I got a little icon that I was able to bring in, see how it's like 15% white. It could be something like that, like a background behind it. 
so it obscures. I could even show you. I'm going to go over to my tool here. I'll show you what I mean here. If I switch back to the welcome screen, and there you've got like a, I don't know, it's maybe a 15 or 20% white overlay. So you can see the sketch through it. You can see the text, the type on top of it, but it provides a buffer. Maybe that's, that's what I'm thinking, yeah. right? Right. That's what, exactly what I was thinking, but I, I couldn't figure out how, like, how do you, how do you show that? And I think it's, yeah. What I'm hearing you do is annotations and showing, but I could see this possibly being sketches that you would cut out if you were going to be showing somebody and maybe even having it. Other people, yeah. right? Like if you had a gray. You could oh, there you go. So what if we just kept the layout pretty similar? Did you see the other page that you did originally just briefly? Yeah. That one. I'll take photos of these two and share them. I'm not sure they're fantastic work per se, but I mean, it's a made up exercise that sort of just stretches us, right? That's, I'm glad that Amy, you're throwing some wrenches at me. Hopefully I'm catching them. <laughs> you are, I know. I, 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 I know you fun. like hard problems to solve. And so the, these are these are not common ones. And when it comes to sketching, be able to sketch on the fly yeah. um, like this and think through it is it's, it's, a, it's a big skill or it's a, uh, yeah, so a having pretty like, difficult thing to do. Having a nice gray marker can be one way to do it. The other way you can do it is um, a lot of times I sketch in, so here's a pencil that I like, it's a Faber-Castell. Really, if you notice, the, the lead is really super thick and soft. So you can achieve the same kind of gray, right? So let's just say, I'll do a small version of it. Let's say I wanted to have like a bar around those icons and then a bar around the text. Maybe there's a bar up here. And there's sort of like a icon. So which you could do with the pencil is really lightly sketch it in there, right? And then you got a little tone. And that would sort of approximate, like you're just trying to trick your eye just enough, right? So now I can put in my little Instagram and my little icons. I guess then you can see like here's the I'll draw the little picture that I'm seeing. Right. I think if I'm right, isn't um aren't some other apps kind of like this where it's full screen and stuff is either hidden, maybe you have maybe you tap it and then the stuff like what if you you could indicate, you know, there's a tap to show icons. Which I guess is uh, what's the word for that? It's a name for that. It's not really modal. I guess there's swipes, taps. You see that a lot more in the interface design now, where you know the screen is just the screen, and you touch it, and then things appear, like on a video, right? Sometimes, like when you play a video. You know, like on YouTube, it'll you'll see the controller and all the controls, and then it'll fit. You know, there's some timer that it'll fade away. So maybe this only you know is touch activated. I guess the other thing is, if you do full screen photos, you have to then know that your uh, squares are. Are dead, maybe? Or do you, is there like a double tap maybe? I have heard that Instagram 
has double tapped um, yeah, an automatic like. Sort of does a heart, right? Sort of how you like it. So again, that would make like, makes me think of conventions. Which can we break? Because eventually you will have to make some choices. I mean, I think Instagram is sort of reaching peak Instagram at this point, right? With so much stuff in here. I mean, where else could they put things? They have to start eliminating things. I guess they could maybe get one more icon in here. Maybe a couple more in here. I don't know what those would be. These are for the touch targets. These are about maybe you could get maybe you could get one more in here. So talking maybe three more. So you're talking twenty little el twenty elements. Right. I like also, Mike, that you're showing that uh, print printouts are a great way to do overlay yeah. sketching on them as well. And so this is also a great technique, I think, that some of us forget about at times. Yeah, I think sometimes and, uh, low tech is really helpful. So as an mm -hmm. example, remember we talked about uh, on the previous page, sort of exploring this idea of like dark. I can actually do that if I, I have my Remember I talked about what if we did a gray marker? So let's just go in there. You could do it right on the printout. I'll assume it's right here. My friend Joe Regan, you might be out there. <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me. Awesome. Now, uh, for those of you on the line, uh, um, I think we're getting close to the point where where we have our show and tell time. So uh, finish up your final little tidbits and and uh, if you're if you're interested in sharing with the rest of the group your fantastic ideas, um, now's your time to uh, to get yourself ready. So you can see now the printout. I can like indicate what would it look like if it's light gray, right? And then, you know, I mean, you just, it's, again, think of this stuff as means to an end. What if I really push it? Let's say we do go black. Well, one thing you're going to have to account for is these are going to have to reverse. Let's just circle them. We have some requests for mustaches and monocles on, um, on, our, uh, on our friends here. Perfect. <laughs> Unibrow, mm -hmm. you. <laughs> That's my friend Wyatt. He attends. Uh, he's a Crimson Tide boy. Fantastic. So we already have a volunteer to share right. as well. If anybody else is is ready to uh, volunteer, That's what time um, maybe it's we're um, looking twenty after, so we could do. Mm -hmm. Do a couple like I thought three to be safe. We could do more if people want to go. Mm -hmm. So we have um, we have three volunteers so far. Ash, is that um, a volunteer yep. that you're looking? Yep. Another yep. volunteer? No, I was have... hearing. I was saying we had one. We have three. Oh, okay. I, I misunderstood the, the chat. So it looks like we have. So far, we have Zoe. We have. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna pronounce this wrong. Matthias, is that how you pronounce it? And Wiggs. I don't know if Wiggs. If that's your first name. Um, so I don't know, Mike. If you want to. Um, yeah. If you want to call on somebody, or if you want me to do that for you, or how you, how you want to go about this, I'll let you tee yeah. it up, and and I'll do whatever you want me to do. I think you can see people better than me, so why don't you go ahead and pick some people? I'm gonna do. Uh... I'm going to turn off my share. I want to make one comment about, um, so I think you're right, like these printouts like this, this is so handy. Like you could have three of these printed and try different things. It's a really quick way to prototype ideas and see them quickly. And it's pretty cheap. Um, it can be really handy, especially now this is a little bigger than real size. So it can be handy to like, maybe you'd actually print it with the phone on there and you hold it in your hand. 
like seeing it in the real size can be really helpful uh, when you do when you do this kind of this kind of work. Okay. Fantastic. So our first volunteer was was Zoe, Zoe Hall. So um, Zoe, if you want to go ahead and uh, share, I don't know, Mike. If I know you've you've done these presentations before, if there's a, a good way that you can recommend that folks are sharing. Um, I would say um, if you've got a webcam, you can probably hold it up if your lighting is pretty good. That's probably the easiest. That's what I'm hoping. So, also, yeah. I hope that my text is not backwards. That's okay. Yeah. Uh, so I don't use Instagram. I don't. Um, and what I know about Instagram, my own mental models for Instagram is uh, people like attention. And it's a very big social media made by the guys who made Facebook. Uh, and so if something big changes, everyone's gonna know about it. Uh, so I said, I wanna design an interface that would change the look that it already has so much that it will go viral. Cause like, I really wasn't sure what else I would do. <laughs> so the first thing that came up, can you see it? Oh, that's interesting. Can you see it? And is the text backwards? Uh, no. Nope. Okay, good. So I named the other design I had, but this is the first one and I couldn't get it out of my head. So I drew, drew it down. It didn't have a screen yet. So it's like a free scroll, like Google Maps. There's no up and down or left or right. It is everything. And I said, well, if it's gonna be like that, there's this tiny little thing that puts you back into the center which would, so what is it? Yes. These are people. You sort of like more people oriented. It is very story oriented because you said, oh, if you remove stories, wouldn't that be the weirdest thing ever or whatever? I think you said that. So I said, well then let's just put stories in the center. What did you say? I think they get lots of pushback if they remove stories. In yeah, so don't remove stories, put it in your face. The and it, it, the lines are like related. Interesting. So these are other people who replied to this story. Why is this the biggest one? I'm not sure, but I know that these lines mean that these are the people whose story, who also have stories and they reacted. Some people don't have stories, but you see how this comes off the line? Yeah. So That's you free cool. scroll it. The, the amount of people that's the old uh, Google PageRank where the most people at LinkedIn made you. That's cool. Form, right? So it's the same idea. That's cool. And then I was like, oh, shoot, where are the rest of the functions that he said I should have? You know, all of these up here that I wrote down. So I just put them on the top and the bottom. But specifically, the, the three on the top are the three on the bottom here. So new post, your comments and okay. messenger. These mm -hmm. might switch. The likes might go here and put the post in the center, whatever. And then you're like, oh, what's posts? Oh yeah, also this, icons for stories. If you change the stories icon to this wacky thing, dude, exactly. everyone will know what you're talking about. It represents the, yeah, the network. It represents this chaos. Yeah. Reinvents what stories mean. And then this would probably be the posts and then the posts would be normal. <laughs> That's just one. Should I, am I taking too long or could I explain the other one? Um, why don't we, why don't we see um, if we can um, move on, but Zoe, and I have some recommendations here from folks. Um, take a picture of, of your sketch and put it in, um, in the chat area. Yeah, don't that might be. Android. A good way of us doing that as well. And while while folks are, are brave enough to take photos and put them in chat, I'm going to go to our second volunteer, which is Matthias. Hello, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yes. Hello. Okay. So I hope everyone's having a great night, night or afternoon. Um, I don't know how much you can see, but starting from the top. Um, okay, left to right, we have the Instagram logo. Then what I did was I created like 
it looks like the Olympic rings, but that would be like a quick button to expand the stories. Oh, okay. Um, after I clicked, it would look like it looks right now. Interesting. And then in this corner, we have the shop button and the profile, mm -hmm. which I believe that it's on the bottom for you guys. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, well, if you take a look at the whole thing, I, I kind of focus, focused on making like the pictures, mm -hmm. um, the main thing. Right. And then right um, below the picture, I try to just put everything right there. So we have the, like the profile, the user profile, the name, the like status, comments, send, the, the picture slider, mm -hmm. um, the bookmarks, the different options where you can share and do other stuff. And then with that plus thingy, you would see the description and the comments if you're interested in that. And well, right at the bottom, we have home search, the add whatever media you want a little bit bigger. And then the, the messenger and the likes. So yeah, that's all. Then I quickly made the vertical one, which um, it would be just literally turn, turning it vertical and it kind of works just the same. And yeah, I think that's all. So if you click on the stories icon, would it flip out the stories and or the posts and then swap it for the stories? Is that what your thought is? Yeah. Um, yes. I mean, once you click that uh, that thing, it would look like it looks now, okay. the way it looks now. Okay. Cool. Very nice. Would you... These are some pretty uh, innovative ideas. Yeah, I think maybe Instagram needs to uh, come to Milwaukee or or just come to our, our uh, lecture series to, to find the, the designers of the future. I love it. So, and, and I love that, uh, that, that uh, Matthias, that you uh, chose to take on the challenge that I gave Mike as well. That's cool. That's awesome. Um, so our other uh, volunteer was Wigs. And I think I saw Wigs as, as we were talking, preparing for this. Um, so Wiggs, if you want to take the floor, that would be fantastic. Wiggs, I think you're, you're muted, Wiggs. So we're, we're seeing your awesome sketches, but we're not hearing you. Yeah, so to keep track of all the constraints, I sort of uh, did all the icons at the top. So every time I use an icon on your screen, I could always count off what are the different functions and icons that I've utilized on the screen. So for my first concept, I had I put in the, the logo of Instagram in the middle, put in a, a search bar right in the top. And I don't use Instagram and I've boycotted Instagram since 2016 for a reason. <laughs> and so this is all based you know, theoretically and, acad uh, and academically. So, and then I have your more settings at the top and that's the top bar, the top nav. So moving to the profile, you have your overlay icons of like, uh, comment and send. And I have added another icon called expand, which basically expands the image to a different screen mm -hmm. and transports some of the icons. So here you have, a, you know, example, you have an image of your uh, kitty. So Kitty gets expanded. You have your home button. If you want to go back to your home screen, you have your X up to go back to this screen. And then you have your useful comments and, and like, but, uh, like icons. And then I move the user story to the bottom. And, and then you have the option to move them uh, horizontally via carousel. Then you have your home. You have your video. You have your add to cart or shop. You have your own user profile, user stories icon, and then, then you have your, I forgot what this is. Bookmark. Bookmark, yes. And then I did a flow where what happened if you actually shop on it. And mm -hmm. so here's a section where you have your basic top nav shop uh, profile. 
your uh, information and then the different uh, products for influencer to sell with a little bit of description. And then you have your add to cart button on the bottom with a more link so that you'll have the expanded view of the other offerings. And then I did another concept where basically I took the added button and made it sticky. So it floats up and down if you decide to move to the screen. And then you have your usual uh, bottom nav and your usual top nav. Then I took the challenge and here we go. Ding, ding. So this is the horizontal aspect. So I was really inspired by game UI. So top nav, you have your, prof your icon, a little bit of a profile, your shop, your comments, your search, Instagram icon, and then the images. I thought it'd be a great idea to create a carousel so you can actually move to a different content that this particular influencer happens to have. And then you have your home button, your video, and your bookmark, but then you have a limited section of just your top user stories that you did based on a logic algorithm that you visit based on some topics. And then you have your additional more icon. And then what happens if you actually took that and you chatted with someone based on the landscape view? So now you have your, uh, so I divided it up into a tree up with the middle. And then you have your chat section uh, you have your, where you send your comments, you have your icon, your profile, then the different top nav on a vertical position. And then you have your different comments that you see from other users that are present in your chat with a top, uh, with a search bar on top of that and the Instagram logo. And the rest are just iterations of this getting wilder and wilder <laughs> as I go along. I like that. I really like the first page and your solution for making sure you didn't miss any icons to make that inventory along the top of the page. That was a great idea, right? To sort of indicate, what do I have to work with? Then you can make decisions about pulling it down. It was really helpful. That's really cool. Thank you. Nice work. Loved seeing this sketching. I see people are posting in the chat as well, so. Mm -hmm. So I see uh, Ula. Ula uh, posted some um, her sketches, and um, I, I, there, what is posted ha is is very precise. So I don't know, Ula, if you are if you are brave enough to to share with us um, your file, or I could I could screen share um, on your behalf, and and you could talk. I don't know, Ula, if you're interested. I'm just looking at these now. These are cool. Mm -hmm. Sure, I can try. It's I'm, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, All right. Do you want me to screen share for you? Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, yeah. OK, let me see here. And I'm going to go in here. Give me a second. Oh, of course, I'm I'm all ready to screen share, and then of course, as as I'm going for it, it <laughs> it gets all funky on me. Give me one moment here. I'm losing stuff. Come on, screen share. Okay, I'm just gonna share my screen. Hopefully, I don't have anything embarrassing here. There we go. Can you all see that? Come on, share. Okay. There we go. Okay. Ula, go for it. Okay, so um, the first screen, I thought I, I want to make it more conventional, more like an actual, I mean, more like an Instagram looks right now. Uh, but my first idea was maybe to move um, move Instagram stories so they will scroll like a feed, and then I didn't, um, and they will be just on the side, um, uh, and I didn't want to like change too much of the features here. I just left it like this just to see how that would work. Um, the second screen I tried was uh, 
also to play with uh, just with the stories and I moved them to the bottom. And I also removed the like button because um, when I'm using Instagram, I just double click on the photo and that's what I'm finding more convenient. So I, I removed the, the little heart and I just Simplified. Um, made it more intuitive. So you just click on the uh, on the photo like a button. And that was my another alteration. Um, yeah. And then the uh, third screen, I tried this challenge and that was really like, I wasn't really um, thinking too much here. I just really liked the, how the, uh, the, the photos look when they are shaped like circles. Mm. So I thought that would be interesting, um, maybe an interesting experience if those circles would be for stories, but also for actual photos. Uh, and then you scroll them, uh, you scroll the Instagram feed to the uh, to the left, the same way. Mm. And, um, then those um, uh, the bottom uh, two screens are my uh, ideas how Instagram could look like if the that was the second challenge if the whole photo would be presented on the screen and um, different va variations of the overlay. Uh, and I like the idea of transparency. So I thought maybe the uh, the top uh, bar could be also transparent, like 15% transparent. Um, the same for the, the same, I, I like the idea for the comments, for example, that comments could be on the, um, could have um, semi-transparent background, but could be still overlaid on the photo. So yeah, <laughs> these were my uh, ideas. My You've got through a lot of ideas. Yeah. That's great. Love this. And it looks like you framed out the edge with a straight edge and then sketched in the middle, mm -hmm. which you know, is, is nice when, if you've got that available to use your straight edge. Really nice work. I'm really impressed with everyone. And so how did you guys feel doing this? Like, I don't know if you normally sketch like this. Did it feel good to do this? Was it, what was your sort of reaction to sketching? Um, oh my God, I'm responding in my, inside my stomach. <laughs> I feel like I sketch too slow. And I feel like I lose ideas as I try to make the shapes. Because hmm. I don't want to make it chicken scratch because I need people to understand it. Yeah. But if I try to make it precise enough that other people can see it, I feel like I slowly lose ideas. Yeah, it's hard to find that walk that line between too detailed and not deal detailed enough, right? Some I have a question. Yeah. Um, related to the last person who was presenting. So she had like, when it was landscape, she had two separate images, right? And the stories on the left, of course. Um, how would it look like if there were like scrolls of like, not like all together, but like separate scrolls. Mm. You get my point of what I'm saying? They're like, so two separate images. Yeah. Almost like uh, like um, in Las Vegas, what do they call that? The one arm bandit, right? You pull the handle and you see the, the little icons and then they- <laughs> That'd be cool. <laughs> you could just hit a, hit a random button and you know, a bunch of stories would spin for you to look at. But yeah, your question was like, um, if we had sketched before as a software engineer, we um, like for the projects that we do for junior and senior, we do have to have like mockups made up. Yeah. So we don't actually sketch. It's like wh whatever you taught us, it's already done in an app. But I think if you personally do it by your hand, you get more visualization of like what you're going to do at which point. Um, is it even beneficial of doing that up there? It's so like drawing by hand or sketching by hand is like, gives more visualization and ideas in depth than just using the app that already have everything in it. Yeah. I think something you said, Zoe, was, is interesting and relates to this is that you mentioned that it slowed you down. And I think that's really important because you notice when I was doing sketching, I was making decisions and like, oh, well, if I put the icon and the name over the picture, now I've got a problem because what if the top left, the top right or top left corner doesn't support that right now I've got to put something underneath it it helps you 
as you slow down, you think through all the decisions you're making and you can then react to them. So I think slowing down is actually a good thing. In some ways, maybe software is almost too efficient sometimes, right? We, we miss those uh, really interesting moments. Like, you know, maybe you design it as a one-armed bandit, like us having this discussion helps us get to that point. If you are in a hurry, then you might not catch that idea. And then you would miss that really unique perspective um, to do something different. So I think it's helpful to be slowed down a little bit sometimes. I agree. Mike, we have a, a question about connecting uh, with you. Um, yeah. What is your preferred way of connection? I have, I have your, uh, your LinkedIn uh, way. Uh, I'm active on um, Instagram and I'm mm -hmm. less active on Twitter, but I'm still there. You can go to my website, roadesign.com, and there's a contact mm -hmm. page. So you can just email me directly. So all those are great options. I answer in most places. Mm -hmm. Great. So I just place that there and then there's your sketchnote army. Um, yeah, sketchnotearmy.com. You can go there and see. That's more other people's stuff. I just, I'm more of a curator of that. Mm -hmm. So. Great. Any other questions? We're, uh, we're close to the drawing time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mike, do you want to give a, a quick, maybe one minute, 30 second introduction of what you're doing on Saturday in case anybody is interested in joining that as well? Sure. So um, one thing that I love and I've loved since I've been in the design business is I love lettering and typography. Um, and so if I do sketch notes, sometimes I'll even just do lettering and typography because I love them so much. Um, I was kind of the crazy designer who looked at um, type catalogs and I love typefaces so I can identify them. And uh, what I realized was I love lettering and typography so much um, that it's created a certain style that I have and that people keep asking me to teach them how I do that lettering style. So for 25 bucks on Saturday, I'm going to do a Zoom session kind of like this, uh, drawing in my notebook a lot like what you've seen and showing sort of my approach towards doing lettering, why I do it, philosophy, and then and then functionally doing lettering with, with people for two hours and explaining. And then that um, if you sign up for that, you get a you get a video recording uh, as well. So you can go back and watch later. So that's what it's all about. My lettering style and hand and a little bit a little bit on handwriting as well. Well you also have a font. Um, I, yeah. you have a typeface that's available through Adobe. And if you have a Adobe Creative Suite account or Creative Cloud or whatever they're calling it these days, uh, you have access to it. And there's, I don't know how many different variations you have, but there are a, a number of them. I've, I've downloaded them and I've, I've played yeah. with them. Yeah, those are available if you have that. There's four. So there's um, uh, regular italic and bold. And then there's a a condensed style headline. And then that has um, uh, dingbats, so little drawings that you can pull pull in there as well. So that's kind of handy. We um, The story behind that was when I did the book uh, as a production designer, I knew I didn't want to handwrite everything because if there were typos, I would just kill my hand. So I realized if I had a typeface, that would solve a lot of problems. So I reached out and found a friend who worked with me to build a typeface and we built it together. Now you can buy it or you can get it from uh, Adobe and it comes in handy. It's sort of like, um, sort of like Comic Sans if it was nice. Some people told me that. So take that for what it is. Are we ready for our drawing, Amy and Ashley? I think so. I think so. So what we're going to, what we're going to do is, uh, I think Ashley's got some kind of a randomizer app. She's going to look through the uh, people that are in the room or something like that, and then uh, spin the wheel, sort of like we're, we're back in Las Vegas. Uh, <laughs> and we're going to pick two winners. And then uh, Amy and Ashley will ship out your, if you're the winner, you'll get the book shipped to you. Oh, I can't open. I was going to share my screen. It wasn't going to be as oh, you can see. more dramatic, but I have to open system preferences. 
All right, so I just went to random.org and I used their true number generator, which is generated the number 28. Um, so let me go to this Excel spreadsheet. So that is the person, Nicole, who has no last name. We have to make sure that Nicole is here or? Nicole, you, you want to leave a, a comment in the chat so we know you're still here. I see you in the list, but I don't know if you're directly here. Ashley, this is actually me. This is Nadia. <laughs> I, for some reason, I could not change my name on uh, on Zoom. <laughs> so what is it calling you? Oh. Uh, so it, it calls me Nicole. I just need oh, to yeah. change my name. So how about I'll give uh, I'll give my prize to Zoe, okay? One of our students in the UX program. All right. And so we're our second one here, I will generate again. And we end up with number 21. And that is, hey, Joe. So the guy we drew a mustache on. Oh, Joe Regan? All right. Yep. I guess he gets to get payback now. No, that, you know, you can flip that to roll again. I think right. that's the first sketchbook. Uh, Are you sure this is a random generator, Ashley? Yeah, and I work with yeah. Mike. I mean, there's all kinds of <laughs> all right. here. So. All right, moving on. Number 13, that is Eric Verna. Are you here, Eric? Yep, I'm here. All right, congratulations. You win the second book. Thank Ooh. you. Hey, Eric, if you could, um, if you could uh, direct message me an address that I can send it to you, that would be fantastic. Okay. And Zoe, we can, we can talk after class and I, I will get that for you. Well, and hopefully this, um, these real basic drawing skills and then doing these exercises I think is helpful. So whenever you get an opportunity to do sketching like this, doesn't have to be, I just picked an interface because we all use phones all day long and it was easy to pick this. And I was aware of it because Instagram had just changed, but um, we just had de a deck redone in our house and I needed to figure out how many pieces of um, decking material I needed. And I went outside and I did a sketch of the deck and did my measurements and did my calculations and, um, Put it, it was right in my sketchbook and it was really handy. So you can use it for all kinds of things. Uh, anything where you you need to figure things out, whether it's layout or um, just getting your ideas on paper, I think is really valuable because you can sort of step away from it and what's in your head gets on the page. Like, am I really, do I really think that? Sometimes that can be valuable or, wow, that's, that's a really interesting solution. I'd never thought of it until I drew it out. It's a, it's a little bit of a meditation I think what I said before, where it slows your thinking down a little bit, you're not not always in such a rush. And I think that's really valuable, especially in a culture that we're in, which pressures us to rush and to do things uh, mindlessly. I think having a little mindfulness in your thinking is really valuable. So I encourage you to keep on sketching and find ways, fun ways to uh, sketch out your ideas. I couldn't have said it better. Um, I am a huge advocate of sketching and a uh, huge fan of yours, Mike, as well. I know you've inspired me to sketch and, um, and because of that, my students know that you are going to sketch if you are um, in any of my classes because of the value of it as well. So um, in my family, my kids now are all sketching. It, it's a crazy sketch world over here. So. Thank right. you again, Mike, for um, inspiring us all, for sharing your talents with us. And I think this was a really fun activity um, uh, for me in particular, just seeing everybody um, and your, your ideas were fantastic. Um, it was kind of a big collaborative design session as well. So thank yeah. you again, Mike. Yeah, that's great. I'm seeing all the, I'm looking in the chat. Thank you mm -hmm. everyone for coming and for uh, our friends who are sharing uh, wigs. Mm -hmm. Uh, Matthias, thank you so much. It was really great to see your thinking and, you know, just um, how interesting and how different your ideas were once you started to sort of get in that groove. So that just showed me, again, how valuable sketching is. And it's, it's so cheap, right? And I mm -hmm. think we, we often now, especially in a pandemic where 
everything comes at us. I mean, we're doing this on a screen, you're watching TV on a screen, you're checking the news, you're doing stuff. Like there's something nice about getting a piece of paper and a pen and doing sketching, right? Or even if you're on an iPad, right? You can turn off all the notifications. So there's something meditative about it and, and helpful. Maybe it's a, it's a little bit of self-care as well as problem solving. Agreed 100%. All right. Well, we have a lot of thank yous. Looks like we have folks dropping off. So once again, thank you so much, Mike, for um, for coming here and, and being part of the lecture series. And um, it's always great to see you. So thank you again. And Eric, don't forget to uh, direct message me uh, your your um, address so we can get you that copy of uh, Sketch Note Handbook. It's good stuff. Yep. And for those that are still here, we're going to put this recording up somewhere publicly. So if you maybe it was moving too fast or there's something you want to see again, we'll have it up. Uh, I think I'll put it on either YouTube or Vimeo and share with you guys so you can check it out again.